break it down for us. What is meant by genetic diversity? Sure. So genetic diversity is kind of what is the different phenotypic expressions of the different plants in a given region. Um, so, but also in mutations as well. You have things like freak show, um, uh, ABC, um, and, and uh, crow's foot. There's a bunch of other ones as well that can be genetic variation. But uh, mainly what we're, we're going to talk about today is kind of the differences between the different land races uh, and the different stuff that was in you know different regions. Um, Jamaica, for instance, had very few. It was almost no land race left by the time I was there in 2016. Uh, most of it had been crossbred with Western you know, poly hybrid stuff that really, like maybe one time that I see anything that was even, you know, pretty uh, natural looking, I guess, for lack of a better term. It really surprised me because Jamaica was always kind of known as being like this really wild place, but there's a lot of cool genetics there, but, you know, it's almost all contaminated with Western stuff now. Whereas when I was in Africa, especially like in remote parts of Zimbabwe, none of that stuff has seen any kind of, um, you know, uh, uh, outside genetics because of the wars and the isolation and the sanctions and all the other stuff, there isn't a big export culture there, right? So they're not bringing in different genetics in order to, to crossbreed for, for export. So they're just growing what they like and what's what's been growing there. So um, it's always kind of interesting, the different motivations of the different places. Um, if you think about it this way too, why is it that the biggest places in the world for the different genetic diversities that are kind of known for being these epicenters are Jamaica, which was a huge trade hub in the Caribbean, um, you know, Durban, which is a huge trade hub in, in Southern Africa, especially the, the anywhere where, really where you had the, the um, what was the name of it, the East Indies Trading Company or West Indies Trading Company or whatever it was back in the day. Um, anywhere, you know, in the 17, 1800s where you had a lot of this heavy trade, that's where you have a lot of the kind of meccas for these genetics. Morocco being another one that was a big trade hub. You know, all these different places that we kind of think of as being like, the best places to go and source out genetics, most of them were huge trade hubs. And back in the day, you know, from, you know, 1100 through, you know, the 1800s, you would keep, you know, hemp on your, your boat um, as part of your sail production. Uh, in case you have a shipwreck, you know, you can grow your own ropes and sails and things like that. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, other plants as well, uh, medicinally, that they would grow to keep as medicine on the plant on the boat. And that's why you have a lot of these different really cool land races in the specific regions that you have is because it was part of your boat standard boat repair kit for the better part of a thousand years. So if you did any kind of long sea travel, you brought pine trees, and you, which is why you have pine trees everywhere and also why they call everything that you can make into a mast a pine tree. There's lots of non-pine trees that are called pine trees is the common name. That's another reason for it. Um, you know, there's uh, all these different stuff, that, but that's the reason why you have that, you know, epicenters of, of genetics for medicinal plants uh, that we all enjoy is because of that you know boat repair kit type stuff and then people kind of growing large volumes of that and kind of finding you know through pheno hunting those those better cultivars in those regions this clip is brought to you by ac infinity use discount code mr grow at 15 to save on any of their products